Celebrating 30 years of phenomenal trend forecasting, five times a week, Monday through Friday. Here's Gerald Salenti with today's trends in the news. Hi, this is Gerald Salenti. It's Thursday, January 7th, 2016, a day that will live in financial infamy. It began last night over in Asia, Shanghai, twice this week. That circuit breaker went on and cut out the Shanghai after it went seven low. But they promised they won't do that again. Twice in one week is enough. They don't know what they're doing, but they'll try anything. Markets across the board down. Gold was up. The rest of the markets were down. Gold's up 16 bucks. Oil. Oil was down some 4%. Pop back up positive, then it went negative again. They're now hitting 12 year lows. West Texas briefly went to around $32 and change. It closed a little above 33. One market after another around the world. They're blaming it all on China. It's much bigger than China, and you know the facts. This market opening. Of the first week of 2016, haven't seen anything like this, they say, in over a hundred years. But you knew it was coming. We also sent you a trend alert today to wrap things up a little bit. And here you go. Start looking back at the news from August 6th. 2015, trends in the news. We warned you this was going to happen. We're going to make a forecast. I believe the equity markets will unravel before the end of this year, if not sooner. So I think things are really bad. They're having a difficult time propping it up. And I think the worst is coming soon. I said I believe that the markets would crash before the end of the year. Well, okay, I'm a couple of days off, but not really, because they started unwinding right at the end of the year. And you can see in December, as you see these headlines coming before you, that we warned, danger ahead, markets crashing, no Santa Claus rally, corporate insiders cashing out, And on December 30th, it's right there for you to look at, the panic of 2016. You can see this coming, and in this trend alert, we outlined it. We predicted the panic, and you were prepared. But you keep turning on the media, they're blaming China, they're blaming this, they're blaming that. It's everything. It's the Ponzi scheme that's finally unraveling. So please read your trend alert. Look at these headlines, go back. You have access to all of them. Go back to August 6th. Listen to what we said. Go back to your trend alerts and your trends in the news and your trends journal and hear and listen to what we said. This is not going to get better. And as I've been saying over and over again, and again, I could be 100% wrong, I believe that gold is the ultimate safe haven commodity. Because when everything else is going down, facts speak for themselves, gold is going up. Could that change? Certainly could. Front page of today's Financial Times, Concerns over China's economy after currency nears five-year low. And you know what I said, currency wars, trade wars, world wars. They even put it out here in a little bit of a way. Traders are selling the renminbi in the open market. And this week's drop of 2% has intensified pressure on other emerging markets to lower their currencies particularly in Asia. 
It has also spurred selling of U.S. and European stocks because they say some fear that this downward trend could trigger a wave of competitive devaluations across the region. Competitive devaluations. Lowering the currency to sell more things. It's not going to work. This is not a competitive devaluation. It's a deflationary, depressionary cycle. And there's no end in sight to it. Panic selling fears prompt extensions to stock sale ban. China is to extend the ban on stock sales by large shareholders until permanent rules to restrict such sales take effect as authorities seek to calm market fears over the lockup that was due to expire tomorrow. You know what that is. Bullshit detected. Take precautions. That's right. They were going to lift the ban tomorrow that would allow people that have large shares of certain stocks or are holding over 5% in one company to sell them after they put restrictions on back in July. They were supposed to expire tomorrow. It's totally rigged. Anything that you see going on that's going to boost these markets, to me, is phony as the President of the United States after all the promises that he makes and the lies that he delivers. Oh, matter of fact, here's one right here. Folks, ready for this one? Soft trade data, cloud outlook for U.S., The November trade gap narrowed 5% from October to $42.37 billion, the Commerce Department said. Exports fell 0.9%. Trade figures in the first 11 months of 2015 widened 5.5% compared with the same period a year earlier as exports fell 4.6%, but he promised to double exports, didn't he? That's right, and that's why we should join the Trans-Pacific Partnership, and that's why, as the President of the United States, as a candidate running over there in the Rust Belt, I promised to look at NAFTA, folks, because we're losing our jobs. So I just make the connection here because you got, whether it's authorities rigging the markets in Asia, or over here, there's not a lot of difference. It's all rigged. Markets stabilized on Tuesday, exactly what I had said, but only after the national team of state financial institutions stepped in to buy shares. Yeah, remember I said that. Go look at the chart, and you can see at the end of the day how they shot up. On to some other economic news to show you how bad this is and how wide it's going to spread. Big rig buyers slam on brakes. Trucking companies are buying fewer vehicles amid lackluster demand for hauling freight. That's right. Whether it's retail or raw material, it's not being hauled. And you're looking at the transportation index going down, not only in trucks, but in trains. Heavy-duty truck orders plunged nearly 37% in December from the same month last year. Meanwhile, dealers are stuck with over 57,000 unsold trucks. As all this is going down and people are getting lousy jobs, you see what's happening. Rents leap at fastest pace in years. Now let's put this together. You get out of college, you got a lot of debt, you got a crummy job, 
You can't buy a house, so you have to rent. Average effective rents nationwide rose 4.6% in 2015 here in the United States. So figure it out. If the rents went up 4.6% and wages stayed essentially flat, you think there's much discretionary income to spend? Do you think that that's the reason why home ownership rate in the third quarter stood at 63.7% near a 30-year low. And now we have on top of that the pressure from the equity markets. Could this reverse in a day or two? Yes, it can. But the trend is in place. And it doesn't look good. You're looking at commodity numbers. You're looking at data, purchasing managers' indexes, import, export, one after another, it's going down. But on the good news, because remember, we heard Obama, he wants that gun control. Well, the drone master and the people that are our allies our favorite allies, you know, those Arab folks over there in Sunni land, in Saudi Arabia, the Wahhabis. United Nations, Yemen civilian deaths spiked in December. A new report out by the United Nations showed that once again, the civilian death toll in the Saudi war in Yemen continued to escalate with more than double the number of civilians killed in December than in November. And there's no signs of this slowing down, but yet the United States sells Saudi Arabia <clears throat> the armaments to slaughter these people. And we also provide surveillance, intelligence, and refueling of their jets so they don't have to go too far, and they can get right back and drop bombs away. You all know about what happened in Germany over the New Year's weekend, where now it's about 100 women claim that they were sexually assaulted by men that looked either Arab or North African or African. I'm mentioning this because of a number of levels. Number one, Germany had taken in over a million people, refugees, last year. Most of them Syrians. Assad has to go, those Syrians, yeah. Because the United States and their murdering friends, particularly the Saudis, have to make sure Assad has to go. Now you're going to start seeing the backlash. And I just want to make this perfectly clear that they're just as stupid in Germany as they are over here or anywhere else. German mayor's arm's length advice on sexual assaults stirs outcry. The mayor of Cologne has inflamed a debate in Germany about migrants and sexual harassment by suggesting that women can protect themselves from men on the streets by keeping them an arm's length away. The remarks by the mayor, Henriette Recaire, were made Tuesday to reporters after the Cologne police said they had received more than 90 complaints of robbery and sexual assaults, including two accounts of rape. Here's what she said, quote, it's always possible to keep a certain distance that is longer than an arm's length, Miss Recker told reporters. So, how's that for real stupidity? And it came from a woman. Could you imagine if a man said something so stupid, how they would say how insensitive he is? But when you're a politician, and particularly one that 
has authority. You can say all the stupid crap you can get away with because, hey, that's what politics are about. We're going to see a big backlash with this. You're going to start seeing it around Europe and around the world. More and more resistance to migrants and to refugees. But there is a solution. There are two of them. On the refugee issue, let's stop the wars. People want to stay home. They don't want to leave. But you don't want to stay home when your house is being bombed. And as for the economy, we spell it out. It's in your trends journals. It's in the trends monthly. It's in the top trends for 2016. That's right. Economic patriotism. Self-sustainability. Let's rebuild America. Let's make our own shirts, shoes, computers, cameras, anything that we want. Bring the jobs and the troops home. Those are the solutions. Occupy peace, occupy prosperity, or continue to occupy more madness. So stay tuned to what's going on. And remember, as we write in the Trends Journal, this is the way we see things. But you know our motto. Think for yourself. This is Gerald Salenti. And that's some of today's Trends in the News.